In this video, I'm gonna show you a very simple, a very basic guide to box cutter. I'm gonna cut out and strip away all the boring stuff, all the fluff, and just give you the most simple and easy way to use this tool in the next few minutes. So let's get started. And if you wanna learn our entire hard surface modeling workflow in under two weeks with about 30 to 60 minutes a day, like nearly 5,000 students have done at this point, then check out our accelerator program in the link below. So in Box Cutter, you need to press the Alt W key to turn that on. If you don't press it, if you press the D key, which is gonna open the Box Cutter menu, you're gonna have this weird menu right here, which we don't use. So I'm gonna press Alt W, and then if you press the D key, you'll have access to this box helper menu. Again, that's assuming you have box cutter actually turned on. Now there's three different types of cutters in here. You have the N-Gon cutter, the cube, or the box cutter, and then the circle cutter. The N-Gon cutter is gonna give you the most versatility. So if I click and then drag while keeping my mouse clicked, so for example, I don't wanna click and release, nothing's gonna happen. I click, I hold my mouse, I drag, and then I can release the mouse button. And now I can just go in, I can click again, I can click again, and again, and again, and again, and draw pretty much any shape that I want. However, in the N-Gon cutter, you're gonna notice that it kind of snaps to the grid. Notice when I move this, it kind of snaps, right? It's not very fluid. If you don't like that effect, you can press the D key and go here and turn off that angle lock setting. So now when I click and drag, you're gonna see it's not snapping. If you're using that setting, you can also hold control and re-enable the snap. However, I personally, in my workflow, prefer to go in here and keep this turned on all the time. So now whenever I click and drag, it's gonna snap by default, but if I ever want to temporarily disable the snapping, again, I can just hold the control button to turn that off. It'll give me some more control, but I prefer to just use the snap setting as you can see here. Now, how do we actually apply a cut? So first you need to draw the shape that you want. So I can click and then drag and I can draw pretty much any shape that I want here, just like this. Now, let's say you're ready to apply the cut. The easiest and simplest way to do this is to press the enter key on your keyboard. That's going to apply the cut and it's gonna be doing it non-destructively, meaning I still have access to this uh, Boolean cutter here by pressing Q and going into the ever scroll menu to recall that cutter if I wanna move it around. However, if you want to work destructively, there's a setting up here where you can change this over to destructive. So now whenever I draw a shape and I apply the cutter, just like this, and I press enter, it's going to basically apply that geometry. As you can see right here, all of that is applied. I don't actually have access to the Boolean. When I move it around, it's, uh, it's already applied. I never use destructive mode because I can always apply this manually whenever I have a Boolean here in the modifier stack. I would not recommend turning this on. You can always apply these later whenever you're ready. Now let's go over some of the customization. If I click and I drag, and again, I just draw pretty much any shape that I want here. What I can also do is I can double click on my mouse and then hold the middle mouse button to kind of pan to move around. And this is going to allow me to adjust how far I want to extrude this. Now, if I go all the way through, it's just gonna stop moving because it has already completed the operation. However, I could maybe extrude just to this point right here, and then I could press the enter key, or I could also just click on the mouse to execute that. And again, since I have non-destructive turned on, I can always you know, turn this off or move the Boolean around, delete it if I don't want it anymore. I have full control, and if I ever want to apply it, I can also do that as well. Now, one setting a lot of people don't know about is the bevel setting. So if I go in here, and again, I'm just doing the same thing I've been doing in this video, what I can actually do is I can click, and once I've kind of you know finished drawing the shape that I want, I can press the B key to add a bevel. And then what I can do is I can press tab to have full control over that bevel. Now when I press tab, you're gonna see these little snapping settings here. So if I ever go over here, it allows you to kind of move these vertices around to wherever you want to move them. I don't really use these too much if I'm honest, but you can always move these around if you want to do that, that's fine. 
and you can mess with that. But the main setting you're going to like here, um, first of all, there's this one, which allows you to kind of drag it and move it around. I don't really use that one either. But the one setting I do use is right here. There's a little blue dot. And this blue dot represents the bevel. If I click it and I hold and I drag my mouse, what I can do is I can actually hold shift to kind of slow that down. And it kind of cycles between a chamfer and an actual bevel. So I can make this bevel a little bit smaller if I wanted to. I could even zoom in, get a little bit more control, and then just kind of figure out how much of a bevel I want. And then once again, I can press enter or I can just click to apply that. So now I have full control over the bevel. And the nice thing about this, if I press Q and go to the ever scroll setting, you're gonna notice that this cutter right here has a bevel modifier applied to it. So I can actually go in here and adjust the amount. So I can make this larger, I can make this smaller, I can increase the segment count, I can decrease the segment count. And you're gonna notice we're using the limit method set to weight. That is added in by default, so you don't have to do that yourself. And if you're unfamiliar, what the weight method does is it simply bevels based off of the edges that have a weight applied to it. So if I go into edge mode here, all of these edges here have a weight applied to it. If I press the N key and go to the items panel and then select, say, one of these edges, we have a bevel weight actually applied here. Now, by default, this mean bevel weight is actually very low. You can see I can increase that. Um, I would just leave box cutter to do what it does best and leave it on the default settings. So I think the default one we had here was 0.1 and just leave that alone. But if, for example, I didn't want this area down here to be beveled, say I moved this up, right? Notice it's kind of intruding right here in this area. So say I didn't want to have a bevel down there. I could actually select these areas and then just put the mean bevel weight down to zero. So now I don't actually have that bevel kind of intruding in that area right there. And again, I still have full control over these other edges here. I can adjust the amount. Again, I can adjust the segments, but we're fully controlling where the bevel is applied based off of these bevel weights that we have applied right here. I hope that makes sense. Now, there is a setting here for bevel weld. Don't worry about that. That's just going to kind of um, weld any nearby vertices together. In this case, it's not doing anything. You can just leave that alone. Don't worry about it. The main thing you'll be adjusting is in here with the bevel modifier on the actual cutter. Now, if you're thinking this is too slow, I would agree with you. There's a much easier way to do that. So again, let's just run through this one more time just so you're kind of understanding how this whole process works. So again, I'm going to click, I'm going to drag, I can cut whatever shape I want, right? And then I can click, I can press the tab key, and then I can obviously add a bevel if I want to do that, right? And I could maybe press enter to apply that. Now, instead of going to the actual cutter here in Everscroll and playing with the bevel modifier, what you can actually do is you can just press Q and then select bevel. And that just means you have to literally just move your mouse to the left or to the right to adjust that. Now, there's a bunch of settings in here, as you can see in the bottom right. There's a ton of settings. I know it looks you know, overwhelming. I don't use those settings personally because a lot of it I just kind of do a bit more manually because I don't need to memorize all that, right? So you can just go in here. You can press Q. You can go to bevel and you can kind of adjust the bevel that way. And if you ever want to change some of the settings here, instead of, you know, memorizing all of those settings there in the bottom right, you can just apply that and then, you know, adjust the settings manually in here. I personally think that's a heck of a lot easier than memorizing all that. So what I mean is, for example, uh, if I pressed, um, you know, C for clamp overlap, right, that would disable the clamp overlap. But if I ever wanted to disable that, I could just go into the bevel modifier, turn off the clamp overlap in there. To me, that's just easier, but you can work however you want. Now, if you ever want to delete a cutter and box cutter, maybe you just want to delete it. You don't want that anymore. There is going to be a redundant Boolean. Notice how the Boolean now has a, uh, a red. It's white before, but when I delete that, it turns red. That means the Boolean doesn't have a cutter anymore. So you can go ahead and just remove that. Um, I'll just delete that one as well. That's an old one. And you can, uh, you know, start from scratch. 
This is the nice thing about working non-destructively because you have full control over the changes and you can honestly apply the bevels and the booleans whenever you want them. Now let's go over to the most basic cutter. We'll just press the D key and then we'll go over here to the regular box cutter. It works exactly the same, except this time it's just a box. So I could go in, I could cut like that, and then maybe I could go over here and then cut like that. Then maybe I could go in and once again, I could always press the B key to bevel and just kind of move my mouse. Now there's a pretty cool setting here. If I want to also bevel the interior side, I can press the Q key on the keyboard. Now you have to do that when it's actually active. So I'll go ahead and redraw this cutter. So I can press B to add a regular bevel. Then I can press Q to add in a bevel on the other side as well. And we'll just press enter. And then I have that effect right there, which is pretty cool. And then of course you have another cutter here, which is the circle cutter. That'll just allow you to go in and add in a circular cut as well. Same idea. You can just press the B key to add in a bevel if you want that. Now, if you want to have a bit more control over where you're adding your cutters, you can hold the control key on the keyboard, but nothing's going to happen. If you go up here, there's a little setting called the grid setting. If I turn that on, you're going to have a very nicely aligned grid here right on top of the object. Now, say the grid's a bit too large for you. You can always go in here, maybe make this 0.1 meters instead. Now the grid's a lot tinier. And if you want this to be larger, I can maybe make this 0.5. Now you have a much larger grid right here. Again, I can just kind of go in, hold control, and snap that wherever I want it. That gives you a lot more control over the placement of the actual Boolean. So you've already learned like 90% of the Boolean operations in box cutter. Again, I like to follow the 80-20 rule, and that means you're not gonna have to learn all these other settings here because they're just not something I really use. I just use the basic settings that get me the results that I want. Now, what I do want to show you are the other operations in here. Um, I'm not sure why these logos aren't up. You know, sometimes there's bugs in Blender that's natural, but there are different Boolean modes you can use in here. So say, for example, I change this over to slice. Usually there's a logo. It's not there right now. But if I change this over to slice, now it works exactly the same as difference, but instead it's performing a slice operation, as you can see here. I could also change this over to intersect, which will apply the overlapping areas. I could even go in here and do an inset, which will add in an inset Boolean. And then I can press the T key to add a solidify. You have full control over all these settings here. Now, I keep this set to difference, the, the cut mode, this default one. This is the one I keep it set to because I, I can actually cycle through different Boolean operations. Let me show you. So if I go in here and I just run my regular difference Boolean, you already know how to do this now, so congrats. So what I can do is I can, you know, maybe add in a bevel and then I can just apply that. But let's say I wanted to cycle to a different Boolean mode. What I can actually do is I can press Q. I can recall that cutter by going to ever scroll. And then I can just press Q again. And you're going to have a setting here for shift bool. This will just allow you to shift through the different Booleans here. So I can click that. I can go to slash and then I can scroll up. I could go to inset, scroll up again. You have an outset scroll up again, that does nothing. That just clears the operation. I can scroll up again, do an intersect, a union, and then back to different. So you have full control over the different modes as well. Now, if you just want to add that mode straight up, you can always go in and check this out. You can draw your cutter and instead of having to go to the, you know, recall the cutter or apply it, I can actually use different operations. I'm going to highlight them on the bottom of the screen. You're going to see if I press the X key, for example, that'll enable the slice mode. If I press the I key, that will enable the inset mode. If I press the J key, that'll do the join mode, the union essentially. So you have full control over these different settings by just pressing a button. So I could go here to inset mode, for example, 
and now I have an inset boolean just like that. That's why I prefer to keep this set to difference by default, and I don't worry about these other modes here because I want my workflow to be very, very simple, and then I can expand on that whenever I need to. A big reason a lot of people get you know, frustrated with Blender is because they're trying to learn a bunch of different tools and settings and menus. That does not matter. Learn the basics and then expand out from the basics. Think of a small circle that gets bigger. Start with a small circle and then expand out. That is how I always recommend working. So let's just do a basic exercise here, okay? Very, very simple. I'm gonna go in, maybe I'll bevel this area. Then I'll right click to shade auto smooth. And maybe now I'll press Alt W to turn on box cutter. And then maybe I just wanna add in a small Boolean cut over here. I can click and drag. And then maybe I'll add in a bevel. And then I'll press Q to add in what we call a quad bevel. And then I can just go ahead and apply that. And if you just you know play with this for five, 10 minutes, the muscle memory is gonna be built within you know 10 minutes of time. You'll get used to this very, very quickly. You'll be frustrated for five minutes, but after that, you'll get used to it. And we're gonna go in here and maybe we'll add in, let's say for example, I'll bevel that. I'm gonna turn off that quad. You can kind of see what's going on there. I'll press Q to disable that. And maybe this time I want to use an inset cut. I'll press the I key. And then if you want to adjust the size, you can press the T key as well. And I'll press enter. However, remember what I said before, these cutters by default have a bevel modifier applied to it. So for example, on uh, this one, now inset Boolean's a little bit weird. They're double Boolean. So I actually have to go in here and recall the main Boolean to access that. And you're gonna see, we actually have, like I showed you before, a bevel modifier set to the weight limit method, but this one's kind of interrupting this area. See what's happening. So I'm just gonna go into edge mode. I'm gonna select that, and then I'm just gonna press the N key, go to item, and then just turn the bevel weight down to zero. And now we have that effect right there. Let's go ahead and just uh, start a new scene real quick, just to refresh that. I could also go in here, and for example, I could press the X key to add in my slice operation, then maybe I could bevel that, um, and then press Q to add in that quad bevel, press enter, and then you could always go in, select these two, add a bevel modifier, and you can just kind of start stacking these operations and getting some very, very interesting effects very quickly without a ton of work. I'll go in, press B to bevel, you know, adjust my settings, Press enter to apply that, and you can quickly make shapes with very little time. So with box cutter, I know there's tutorials out there that try to show you like every menu in here, and you might think it's lazy, but I don't care because I wanna teach you what actually matters. Use like the most basic things and then expand from then. If you can just learn the Ngon cutter, the box cutter, and the circle cutter, that's all you need then you can kind of use the menus at your disposal and kind of adjust that when you need it. So I can go in, I can kind of cycle through these different operations and I don't have to bother with any of these other settings in here because I can always change that manually later. So if you have box cutter, you know, give this a spin, play with some of the settings in here. It's very, very easy to get used to. This is like the easiest way to add Booleans. This is how we model all the time. And we just use, even to this day, the most basic operations ever. We don't overcomplicate our workflow. We make this very simple, very fun, very enjoyable. And if you see you know, any of our, our training programs for Blender, this is why we get people so good in a very short period of time. We're cutting all the fluff, giving you the most basic, simple information, and then you can expand on that once you actually know how to use the software. So if you're interested in learning our full workflow, very simplified in about two weeks of time, which is 30 to 60 minutes a day, you can check out our accelerator program and the link below. You can see all the thousands of student results. We're getting people very, very good at this workflow very, very quickly, and we can do it for you as well. So hope that kind of gave you a very basic introduction to box cutter, how to use it, and I'll see you in the next video.